everyone. My name is Michelle Johnson. I'm the State Director for Adult and Family Education at the DC Office of the State Superintendent of Education. We want to um, take this opportunity to welcome you to this afternoon's presentation on the DC Public Library and how um, the library is working to meet the diverse needs of the community um, through, and, and including adults and youth and families and, and parents and children, um, you know, during the pandemic. Um, we have Mr. Ben Marion, uh, who's been a partner with Asi for many, many, many years. Um, and he was going to tell you, uh, share with you information about the wonderful programs and services that the library offers. Um, they have indeed been a blessing to countless uh, adult learners throughout the city um, as well. And um, they, you know, have uh, had an opportunity to um, uh, revamp a lot of the library structures throughout the city. They're beautiful and um, can't wait till the pandemic is over so we can actually take full advantage of them um, and uh, get our customers back out there and then have meetings and other events at the libraries as well. Uh, help um, today providing support is the Aussie AFE team, which includes Stacey Downey, Cynthia Brown, Tracy Richard, and Nakia Lynch from the Aussie Adult and Family Ed team. If you have questions, please put your questions in the chat. In, in the chat. There are also be opportunities to unmute yourself and ask questions as well. And I'd also like to invite Dr. Heather Bruce, um, who is our partner in the provision of professional development to DC government. Uh, partner agencies and providers. And so Dr. Bruce, if you could please bring your warm welcome as well. Hello, good afternoon to everyone. On behalf of the University of the District of Columbia, we'd like to say we are so excited to have you as part of the session this afternoon. And I'd also like to say thank you to you, Ben, for agreeing to provide us with all these wonderful uh, resources that the library has to offer. Enjoy. Thank you, Dr. Bruce. OK, Ben. All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle and Dr. Bruce and Stacy and everybody at Aussie for, for having me. Um, I'm really excited to talk about the services the library has. Um, so um, my name is Ben and Ben Marion, and I am a, an education specialist. Um, with the adult learning department at the uh, we're at the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Library, so it's part of the DC Public Library system, and uh, so we recently changed our name. We used to be known as the Adult Literacy Resource Center. We're now known as the Adult Learning Department um, because we also have, um, along with adult literacy resources, we also um, include the the computer services that we offer. So we're a little bit more than. Uh, where digital literacy as well. And um, so that's sort of the reason for the name change. And um, I'd like to talk about you know, the services that uh, we're offering um, now that's a, a little, somewhat a little bit different um, now with COVID than, uh, than we used to have. So we have like a little more limited services now at the libraries. And, um, and also I want to talk about mainly what's online that's available. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen um, so we can start doing that. OK. Can everybody see this OK? Can we see it? All right. Yes. OK, all right. Yeah. Um, so um, right now we have 18 branches that are open out of six, and these are the ones that are open. Um, over the summer, most of these were open, about 14 of these, these branches were open. And then um, in September, the Martin Luther King Jr. Um, Memorial Library opened. Um, and uh, re really with the, with the MLK Library, just the first floor is open. Um, so 
the uh, the other the other floors aren't. But you can go in and, and take a look at the first floor and the, uh, the services that are available there. Um, and then most recently, we had Chevy Chase, um, Palisades, and Georgetown, the ones that most recently opened. I think they opened last last month, November. And um, so we you know we have libraries open that are in all quadrants of DC right now. Um, well, except probably for Southwest, that that one's not open, but the other ones are. Um, and um, we do have, like I said, we have limited services. So you can't do everything you used to, but you, you can do some things. So some of the things you can do right now are you can you can return materials. So if you borrow materials, you can return them. Um, you can put up a book on reserve. We have um, books that are kind of packaged. Uh, together that um, we have that were put in our grab and go selection, so you can check those out like a like a little stack of books. Um, and you can, if you know the name of the book and the book that you want, you can have a book page from the stack, so we can go and find a book for you. Um, you can get a library card at a branch um, that's open, and you can pick up a print job. And you can also sign up to use um, some of, some of the computers for a 45 minute session once per day. So before we used to have um, you could come in and sign up for two 70 minute sessions. So we're making them really limited now. So you can sign up for one 45 minute session um, and you can also use the bathroom. Um, so the thing that you can't do um, because we don't want people in for like a long period of time is you can't browse the collection. Um, you can't sit and read and study at a work table or lounge. Uh, you can't copy or scan. You can pick up a print job, but you can't copy and scan. Um, there's no meeting or study. They're open right now. They're available that you can reserve. And we don't have any um, in-person programs events, but we do have virtual events. Um, and you can look at those on the wet library's website. Any, qu any questions about that? Okay. Um, well, again, you can you can um, ask a question at any time, and I'll. Feel um, so, with getting a library card, you can actually get a temporary library card online. So, if you don't want to go into a branch, you can go online, um, and uh, at this link right here, um, dclibrary.org, get a card, and um, the uh, we used to have. It's so that you could um, get this, this temporary library card would last 30 days. So what you get to you, you get it like a couple minutes, a couple minutes after you fill out the online form, you get a temporary library card number and a PIN number uh, that are emailed to you and you can start using um, our online services. And, um, and you, can also, you can also reserve a book with that as well. Um, now, like I said before, we had that available for 30 days. With COVID, we extended that um, to 90 days. So you can use this um, temporary library card that you get emailed to you, the library card number. You can use it for three months, 90 days, um, without coming into a branch. After that, though, you will need to come into a branch to get an actual card. And you'll just need a picture ID and proof. OK, um, and uh, the other thing, if you already have a card, your card expires every three years. But we recently um, extended all library card expiration dates to February 1st, 2021. And then the other thing that we've done um, since the shutdown is that we've eliminated all late. So um, if your book before we had like a flat rate, if you're more than um, 30 days overdue, you got charged five dollars, um, and uh, but now that's been eliminated. So we don't have to do that. Um, if you lost the book, uh, we still charge for that, and uh, the approximate cost for that is about fifteen dollars. Um, so there's still that, but um, I think that the, the library determines if you've lost the book if it's been over more than, than three months. So. Um, now there's something else here that that a lot of people haven't haven't really known about. I've been trying to get around this, but um, there is an additional card. If you're an educator, there's an additional card that you can get 
It's called an educator card. So you can actually have your DC library card and this educator card. It offers additional benefits, but um, it was that you didn't have any like late fees on it. So now that we've eliminated late fees, the main um, benefit for this is that uh, you can borrow the books for nine weeks from many library education. Um, and uh, a normal library card lets you borrow up to 50 books. So this one lets you borrow up to 100 books, so twice as many. Um, and uh, so the, um, the those are the two main benefits of, of an educator card. And uh, to get an educator card, you do have to go into one open library. And what you need is like, you'll need proof of uh, your employment. So it, you know, if you um, if you work for a nonprofit or if you work for uh, any school or charter school, you can come in and bring um, in like a letter on a letterhead with uh, with your principals or your your directors, um, you know, saying saying that you work for that organization. So that's all you need. if you if you do work for a nonprofit um, like you know like the YWCA, then you can get an educator card. You just need that. Um, that proof of uh, employment there. Um, uh, there's the, the link here that you can click on for the for the educator card. Okay. Can we move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a question. Um, does Great. someone need their a library card to um, have print jobs uh, completed at the library? No. No. You. Uh, you, I, I don't believe, yeah, to, to, to just pick up a print job, you don't need a, a library card. Okay, um, so we're going to go into, um, so one of the services that our department provides is uh, virtual tutoring. So this is something that we just started, and um, we do, we're, we're mainly doing it for people who are studying for the GED exam. And uh, there's a link on here that again, well, one of, so hopefully um, we'll be we'll be able to share all these slides for you. So, um, and uh, you'll be able to you, you use the links that I've provided here. And so, for one of the, one of the ways that you sign up for this is click on the link for the registration form, and um, they fill out a, a quick form online, and. Um, after the student registers, then we, one of us will contact the student with the next steps. And they can also call us to request the, uh, the, reg the registration form by email. We can send that to them. And um, what we do is we, we provide a, a, a personal tutor for them um, if they get a certain score on the assessment that we give. And uh, we, uh, we basically work with them online. So through, through Zoom or Google Meet, um, or some of them, if they don't have that, we can work through them by by phone. If they don't, uh, if they don't have um, access to a computer, and um, we, uh, although we, they will need email because we do send the work through that. Um, so we uh, we do assessments, we do referrals, and um, we we try to uh, you know, work on the level that they're at. Okay. Um, so right now I'd like to show you uh, some of the resources that we have on our website. So we have a lot of different services that we provide on our website. And uh, the first thing I'd like um, to really take a look at is just our overall web page that shows um, the, uh, the resources that we have. It's called Go Digital. And um, you can see um, as soon as I went to the library, um, the, this little thing pops up. It says Ask DCPL. So we, this is another thing we instituted because of COVID. We have a chat. So if you have any questions about what the library's offering or um, anything about like you know fees or anything like that, um, we you can chat with a librarian. And um, so you know I'm gonna I'm gonna click no thanks because we're not gonna use that right now. Um, but you can do that anytime and. Uh, the, uh, the library's open, we have people available to answer your questions. Uh, so this Go Digital platform is categorized um, with four different categories, things you can watch, things you can read, things you can listen, and things you can learn. 
And uh, so um, I do want to point out some of the things here. So if you click that, they have um, they give you like three resources here. I want to click more resources to learn. So we're going to go over a lot of these resources. We're going to go over Linda. We're going to go over BrainFuse. We're going to talk about um, Learning Express Library and, uh, and Mango Languages. One of the things that we're not going to touch on, um, just because it offers somewhat some of the uh, Gales Testing and Education Reference Center. So the Testing and Education Reference Center is a lot similar to the Learning Express Library, which I will be covering today. Um, so, um, so this is just a, this is just one easy way to get to the resources just by going to Go Digital, and you can click on what you want and choose the resources from there. Um, so uh, I'm going to go back here. So one of the things the one that one of the things I'd like to talk about is a new resource that we have is called BrainFuse Help Now, and another similar service called BrainFuse Job Now. Um, so I'm going to click on um, Help Now. Okay, and uh, it's going to ask me for my library card number. So you will need to use that. I mean, you will need to have that um, to log in. And um, so BrainFuse is basically, it's a, um, it's a, a platform that has um, a live tutor. And the, the format is, is you have a whiteboard and, and chat. So uh, the, um, the folks can, who use it can chat what their, you know, what their, uh, what their problem is, or what they need help with, and then someone that will get a live tutor that can help them out with that. And um, they actually have a, a resource, a section on here for adult learners. If you look at the top, you see you have home, expert help, study, collaborate, and then um, they have a special section just for adult learners. So if we click on that, you can see the options that they have here. Um, so we have options for the, um, High school equivalency preparation, like for the GED, you can prepare for the citizenship test. Um, they have um, Microsoft Office help, and um, they help with careers and resume help as well on here. Um, if you click on the high school equivalency preparation, um, uh, they have study materials that are linked, and uh, so we can take a look at that. Um, that's not too much. They have like just resources. It's mainly from um, like the GD official site and some other um, tips and strategies here. And um, but they do have um, practice tests on here. Um, and uh, so you can you can click on a different test and you can uh, take a practice test on that subject. It also keeps track of the things that you've taken. You can see here that I've taken some tests and the current test that I'm taking there. Um, and then um, they have, of course, they have a tutor that you can work with. So you can select the subject that you want, and then you can click on that and it'll bring you to the uh, the site where you get a, uh, an actual tutor. Um, so that's really um, the help now section in a nutshell. Um, so I'm gonna close this out. And um, the other resource that we have is somewhat similar, a job now. Um, but what they have is they have um, free um, job coaching. And then after you show this, we have a couple of questions related to the virtual tutoring. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. I, I can take those now. OK, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so Greg writes, what, or Greg, you're welcome to unmute yourself as well, but um, what assessment is used to identify access to a tutor? Um, so we use uh, the, uh, the GED Academy software to, to do that right now. Um, so we, we, give, we give them the, uh, the assessment. We also talk to them we kind of, you know, when, when they fill out the registration form, we talk to them about uh, um, their possible levels. We talk to them about um, what, what uh, technology they can use. 
Um, so we, uh, we, we, we do, we do a little bit of screening before we do that, but we, we've used the, uh, GD Great. Thank you. Um, and also, um, Ms. Johnson has the question, is it limited to GED? Uh, her site offers the NEDP. Um, yes, unfortunately right now we're, we're kind of doing a pilot with this. So um, having people do the virtual tutoring just with the uh, the GED just for just for right now. Uh, we just want to try that out until we uh, we, we get comfortable with um, with working with the uh, the students and um, you know working with uh, Zoom and and all of that. So for right now, it's just D GED students, unfortunately. Okay, and. Uh, Ms. Hawkins, and you can unmute to add to this. Ms. Hawkins asks, is there a reading level required to access this program? Um, so we we do require that they take the, the GED Academy. I think our, our cutoff score with that really is like 135 on a on a test subject. And uh, so there there is that we there is that cutoff. Um, and uh, you know we we sort of make a determination whether we're able to you know, if they come close, we might we might be able to work with them, but we um, we sort of do it on a case by case basis. But yeah, there is, there is that cutoff right now um, because of, just because of our capacity to work with people right now. So there is a cutoff. Yes. Thank you. Um, while we're um, here answering questions, if anyone would like to unmute themselves, you can do that by you know clicking on your microphone and asking any other questions that you have. Uh, and if not, we will move on um, with the Brain Fuse Job Now portion and have plenty of time for questions again throughout the session and at the end. Yeah, that's that's great. So feel free to answer. I mean, feel free to ask any questions. I'll answer them um, as they come up. Um, those are great questions. I'm happy to answer those. Um, and um, so the Job Now, the, the format for Job Now is very similar to the uh, the Help Now. It's a whiteboard. There's um, you you still do it through chat, uh, and but they're the the folks are are trained on how to answer uh, questions. Um, so um, the live interview coaching, I actually went on to uh, to the site and I asked them what do they do to uh, to prepare people for the for the interviews, and they they were telling me that they they um, they, they give them some some questions that they might be asked, some general questions they might be asked at a job interview, and they sort of coach them on tips and strategies for answering those questions. Um, and uh, so um, I haven't, I haven't actually tried, I haven't actually tried it out, like pretended to be someone. I mean, you, you all can try it out if you want to, um, but I just figured that, you know, I would ask them questions to see like what they would do. Um, those of you who have, you know, and repair people for for jobs. You might have more specific questions for them that you might want to ask, and they're they're happy to answer any questions if you tell them, you know, that you're working for a job training program and you want to know what they would do. Um, you can definitely ask them those questions. You can go on the site and uh, and just chat like you like a like a student would. Um, so they have um, job coaching. They have you know, interview coaching. Um, and the and one thing that they they provide is unemployment assistance. So we'll click on that. Um, and um, this the unemployment assistance is um, is offered at a different time. So um, the BrainFuse Help Now and the BrainFuse Job Now they're open from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. I have that on another slide in case you forget. Um, but uh, and the unemployment assistance is open from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. So the other the other services are open from 1 to 10 p.m., but the, the unemployment assistance is open from 3 to 9 p.m. So um, they offer um, uh, tips and uh, strategies for filling out the unemployment forms, get the getting unemployment benefits. So those are trained people that can that can do that. Um, so that's uh, that's something I think that's relatively new that they off that they started offering. Um, but it's a, it's a resource that you can find on this job now, uh, site. Um, the other thing they, that you can do is they have, um, resumes. Um, they have like, a online resources that you can use. They have a resume lab where you can upload a resume and they can give you, um, comments on it. Um, they'll give you feedback on the, on it. And, uh, 
and if you're if you're having problems writing one, they can they can do that live in the chat. Okay. Um, then the other uh, another resource that uh, that we've used here at the library um, that we found helpful is the Learning Express Library, and um, with this one. Um, if you're using this uh, like remotely from home, you initially you need to put in you might need to put in your library card, but uh, you create an account. So I've already created an account, and I can show you that. Um, and uh, I do want to show you just like how the options for you to register. So um, here it knows that I'm working at the District of Columbia um, Library because. I am using this on the library's Wi-Fi. I'm actually at the Martin Luther King Library right now, so it recognizes that. If you're um, going from home, you might need to choose that, or you can. It might ask you put it, to put in your library card number. Um, but um, this form lets you uh, put in um, your name. You can put in your email if you want to, want to, but if you want to, but you can register without it. So even if you don't have, if your student does not have email for some reason, then you can register them without an email address. If they don't want to put it in, they can um, they can use it. They just need a username and a password. And one of the things that we do here at the library for our students is that we um, we just register them. We we make up the password and we uh, we use our own security question and security answer just in case um, they lose it. We have it for them. So. Um, so the, the registration form can even be really short. You can make it shorter by choosing not to register by email. Um, so uh, I'm going to go to login because I am a registered user and I can show you around through um, that way. OK, so. Um, the first thing that it takes you to is uh, my center and um, this it actually saves the things that you've done. So you can see I've done I've, I have a test. I have done some tutorials. I've downloaded an ebook. Um, I've done some things on the career dashboard. Uh, you can say I looked at an article on fashion designer um, and uh, you see that I, I have uh, one resume that I started um, and that I have some occupation matches. So um, we're going to cover some of those things. Um, so if I go to home, here it shows you the different sections on the website. So with um, career preparation, um, you can um, choose to learn more about a career that gives you uh, information on different careers. Um, you can do a job search, but it also has like exams um, that you can study for. And uh, we've actually had a student come in um, who is preparing for their commercial driver's license and took the, the test through that. So there's different things that you can uh, choose from here. Um, I don't know how helpful some of these are. I think Stacy and I were reviewing some of these and she said some of these were might maybe at a higher level, but you can check them out and see if any of these um, exams, you know, might work for your, uh, your, your students or your customers. Um, Another service that they have, and we actually have a separate link to this on our website, is called the Job and Career Accelerator. So with this one, you can um, it has a resume builder on it. Um, you can find a career match. You can explore occupations. So you can search for jobs. You can help you prepare for an interview. It has eBooks on different careers that you can download, and you can look at um, different schools and scholarships. And um, so one of the things I'd like to um, show you is uh, their career match. Um, so if you if you go to click, find a career match here, um, it has like an interest matcher and a skills matcher, and you can choose which one you want. And um, I actually, since I already did one, I'm actually gonna go back to my center, and I'm gonna go to the, um, the occupation matches. I'm gonna scroll down to the uh, the interest matcher, okay. And so I, what it does is it gives you a series of questions that tries to ha that uh, tries to find like what your, what your interests are, and um, it categorizes those here like realistic, investigative, artistic, and social. So you can see mine are really high on artistic and social, 
And um, and then I, you know, I, I gave him the preparation. So it gives you a preparation level of three. I just pick that. I have a I have more than medium preparation, but I so I can update that if I want to. I actually have like you know college, so medium preparation is is a little bit lower than college. Um, so I can view the matches, okay. And um, under medium preparation, here are the the matches that that it's come up with. So things like fashion designers, interpreters and translators, um, merchandise displayers and window trimmers. So I'm actually going to choose that um, the merchandise displayers because I think there's information um, that it has for DC. Um, so with the occupation, it gives you a short video about the job. Um, so you can watch that under uh, wages and trends. Um, now, some, some of these doesn't have information for, uh, for different states. So some of these didn't have information for DC, but this one does. So you can see it with DC, it's making just a little bit more than the average. Um, and uh, so that's the wages and salaries portion. Um, with knowledge, skills, and abilities, it gives you, a, you know, it's a bullet point list of the, the things that you need to know and be able to do for the job. Um, it gives you some ideas of what tasks and activities will do at this job. And um, um, some of the tools and technology that you'll need to use. And uh, education and training. Okay, so it says most occupations in the zone require training in vocational schools related to on-job experience or an associate's degree. Um, and then under training, it says the employees in these occupations usually need one or two years of training on both on the job and informal training with experienced workers. Okay, um, and uh, so another thing that it, that it has is that you can view available jobs. So if um, I had already searched for this, so um, you know, so it's given me some jobs from my previous search, but I can put in my zip code and um, what I choose here is how far away I want that to be. And you can see there's um, so there's uh, some merchandise associate jobs, merchandise jobs in the area. Um, and I can choose to, you know, save or apply for that job. Um, okay, so um, that is the, the interest matcher. This is just matching uh, jobs from my interest. So the skills matcher will match it, will match you from um, the, uh, the actual, the skills that you believe that you have. Um, and um, so I want to go back to home here. So that's, um, that gives you a little bit of what, about what the job in a career accelerator can do. The, uh, the with a high school equivalency center, um, it has uh, options for you to build basic skills. So it has, if we go there, I can show you real quick. Um, so you can take tutorials, which are online instruction. You can download eBooks and you can go you like short quizzes, which are skill builders um, that you can do. And, uh, to um, to just practice your skills. Um, so these are like basic, you know, basic skills that you're working on. Um, and then once you're thinking that you're ready, then you can um, prepare for the GED test. And it has uh, practice tests for each subject. It has tutorials, uh, which is online instruction, and then eBooks that you can download. Um, and uh, it has, so it has an eBook in each subject that you can download. It's um, the, uh, the the publisher is Peterson's, um, and they uh, they have um, looks like they have they they have um, you know somewhat similar to what you would you know actually purchase, um, but the 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 great thing is that you can just download it and um, and use it right from your computer um, without having to check it out from the library. Um, so um, that's the. Is there anything else that there? So they they have um, they do have the GD in Spanish as well. So if if you have if you work with anybody that's studying for the GD in Spanish, they have materials um, for that. They have resources for that. And also the the recursos para hispano blantes section is um, is a section that has preparation for the GD as well as building basic skills in Spanish. Um, and then the other thing that uh, that it has now some of these places overlap, 
So with, with adult core skills, you can um, build your basic math skills, become a better reader, says so better reading skills and uh, basic grammar, writing and speaking skills. And then under here, you can also choose to take the citizenship um, and prepare for the citizenship test. So you can, you can prepare for it. Um, and uh, so it gives you some information about that. It has an ebook that you can download as well. So there's a lot of um, good information, good resources on this particular site. Um, and um, I, mentioned, uh, I mentioned before that another similar um, resource to this is called the, the Gales Ed Testing and Education Reference Center. So it offers somewhat similar um, uh, resources and services to the uh, to this one, the, um, the Learning Express Library. And they're both under Learn, under Go Digital, and what I've included the, um, the direct link on, on the slides. Okay. Um, so for, for people who are, if you want to, if you yourself want to learn um, a, a language or uh, you have, um, you know, a student who's learning English, there's uh, another resource called Mango Languages. And um, I can uh, show you this in a minute. So I'm going to um, log in here. All right. Okay. And um, so you can see, let's, I want to go back to, so that here I, I had selected um, English for Spanish speakers. So it teaches you English from the language that you already know. So um, I can choose, if I wanted to choose like English, what I'll do is I'll ask me what my mother tongue is. So unfortunately don't have Amharic, um, but they, they do have some languages here. They have French, German, um, Japanese, uh, Russian, um, and Spanish. Um, and uh, what it will do is it will, um, it will basically start with a language that you speak in. It's kind of translating. So it's not immersion, but um, it can be helpful. So I don't think you can hear the audio for this, but basically it's reading this. It's saying um, it in Spanish and it's also it's mainly saying it in English. So it is translating it there. Okay. Um, so if you think that can be helpful, I mean, this could be a resource that, uh, that you yourself could use or your students could use. Uh, to learn either another language or learn um, English as a second language. Okay. Um, another resource that I'd like to talk about um, is lynda.com. And uh, what Lynda is, it's, it's, a, it's a resource that has mainly videos with a lot of different uh, instructional um, categories. So, um, well, for a second, I'll sign in here. Okay, I'll log in. Um, so what lynda.com is, is it's a, it's a resource that has videos that tells you um, a lot of different, um, about a lot of different software, technology, um, and business. So if we go to like business, we can choose, um, you know, we can click on Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, um, Excel, so options there. Um, so for students, they can, if they're learning, if they're trying to learn their computer skills, this could be a resource. And also, um, if we go into education and learning, if, uh, if you're a teacher and you want to, to get some professional development, it has um, different resources for that. So it first focuses on the new releases, some of the featured, um, resources, and then you can search for, it says that he has like 36 courses here. So you can uh, choose based upon like the kind of software or the skill level. Um, and, uh, you know, we can choose more here and um, we can also sort by different things. Um, so this is another resource that that is video instruction, um, which, is, which is, is actually pretty popular. You'd have to this service is offered um, to the general public. They have to pay, 
but uh, a lot of people are using um, this because they, they like the, uh, the video preparation for it. Um, so um, that's, uh, that's what I have here under, um, these are the different, so there's many different things that you can use to learn on the website. I just picked out these because I thought that they'd be the most interesting, maybe the most helpful. Um, so uh, just as a reminder, so this is a, a slide that just talks about the brain fuse with the help now and job now. Um, it's open 1 to 10 p.m. and the unemployment system is open from 3 to 9. And this is also just a, just a slide with the career match. Um, so just to remind you, that's found on the, if you're interested in the career matching with the interest in skills matcher, that's found on the Learning Express Library's Job and Career Accelerator. Um, thought you might be interested in that. Um, so um, if you do have kids, um, there is, we do have a lot of different video storybook uh, options here. There's book flicks, overdrive read-alongs, there's something called science flicks, true flicks, and tumble books. And what these are, they're video or animated storybooks. And uh, so that we just have them linked under this, we have all of them under one link here. Um, and uh, so if you, if you are, if you, if you have parents that have kids, then this could be a good resource for them. And um, these are pretty, uh, these are pretty cool. I'm gonna look at book flicks first. Um, I'm just gonna focus on this mainly. So we hit start, you can choose from different categories. Okay. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna choose animals and nature. And what it does is it pairs up um, a fictional book with a, a book about um, another book that's related to it with, with facts. So um, if uh, I'm gonna scroll down here to um, the snowy day. So we have the pair here is the snowy day and then the, the, the factual book is uh, snowy weather days. Okay, so I'm gonna click on um, so you can you can watch a story or read the, or read the book. So we're gonna click on watching the story. And, um, so this is like it goes right into a video, and uh, you can choose for it to read along with you. And uh, you're it's it's having music right now, but I don't think you can hear it. Um, and uh, what it will do is actually read the book, and I'll have the video of the book going along with it um, at the same time. So. I want to just uh, wait for a minute so that I can um, show the words because what I'll do is uh, I'll have the text on there at the same time um, as you're reading. So there's music playing right now, which you can't hear, but so right here is, is showing the text. And it's highlighting each word as it goes. Uh, so it, it has the text on there um, that you can have, and it reads it at the same time that, you, that you're watching it. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay. So um, that's BookFlix, and a, a lot the other uh, ones are similar to that. Um, so that's the one I'm going to just show and feature, but you can check out the others. Um, and... Um, so this, again, uh, this is just a, I just had these screenshots of it just in case we weren't able to get that to load, um, but it, it worked fine. Um, but the, so they do have different categories that you can choose and, and, and books are paired so that you have a, a, a book with like a fiction story and a, a factual book that you can read. Um, and then it reads along the, uh, it has the text there for you at the same time that you're looking at what's going on in the story. So that's pretty nice. Um, so that brings us to um, some other services that we have. Uh, I wanted to talk about um, some of the maybe recreational services that, that we use that, uh, that are free. Um, so we do have uh, two video ones. We have Access Video On Demand um, and we have Canopy. And um, for, with those services, you can stream documentaries, educational films, instructional videos. Canopy has um, films like independent and foreign films. Um, and uh, the uh, it does have a cap on that. Um, so you can only watch six per month. 
um, because we pay for each, the library actually pays for each movie um, that you watch. Um, so let's um, let's check a, take a look at that. Um, this has some interesting offerings. So I'm going to log in so you can see more of the site. Um, okay. So here you can get an idea about what the offerings are. So, um, so like I so like I said, it has uh, independent films, it has foreign films, um, documentaries, um, and uh, you can. Um, but it also, but it also has some some things that you might be interested in. Is it does have a section on business. So there's actually um, videos on career development. So if people wanted to find out more about a particular job, they uh, they can look at there's some videos that uh, that could be related to that to that particular job. Um, so you know, talk, maybe talking about recreational things, but there's still things that you can use um, in terms of uh, your job and what you're working on your, with your students or you're with your customers with. Um, so um, it has videos on work, workforce uh, workplace training, career choices global business and culture, career tips, um, job interview skills, and resume building. Um, so, you know, you can watch it for fun, but you can also use it for work as well, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and then a uh, related service is Canopy Kids. So if, again, for parents, um, this could be a good resource. And I'm just gonna click on this. You can access the Canopy Kids directly from Canopy if you're already in there. Um, and uh, so what you know, what I would just want to point out, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go back real quickly so you can see something. Um, right to, to the right of my name up top where it says Ben, and then you have where it says six there, that's the amount of movies and shows that I can watch. So that's a cap. But when we go to Canopy Kids, there is no cap. So you see there's there's no number there. That's that's because if with the kids, they can watch as many of, of these shows as they want to, um, which is nice. So um, there's uh, there's educational things. There's um, we have Sesame Street, we have Arthur, there's Daniel Tyer's Neighborhood. So there's there's um there's a wide selection of entertainment, but also educational um, films and movies that they can watch with the service. Um, so, um, yeah, so the canopy is limited, but canopy kids is unlimited, which is nice. Um, so, um, there's Freegal, which is um, a website where you can download and stream music from uh, popular music labels like Sony. Um, we have uh, Overdrive or Libby. So, Overdrive is the website on. Um, on our on our website, it's uh, on dclibrary.org. It's a website where you can look at ebooks or check out ebooks. Libby is the app, so if you're going to use, um, if you're actually going to read an ebook, like either on on a device like a tablet or or, or phone, um, then you can use you can install Libby on that device and uh, read the or and check out books that way. Um, and we also have magazines. So we have RB Digital Magazines, um, which is, it has, uh, we can we can look at, take a look at that and look at the, um, the selection real quickly. So um, this has some, some popular magazines. We have, you know, there's the New Yorker, Newsweek, The Week. It also has the Us. So some, some ones of it that you might see at the, at the um, checkout when you, go, when you go to a store. Um, it has some of the popular magazines for that as well. Um, it also has magazines in different languages, mainly Spanish. Um, so you can check out that. Um, so um, yeah, so that that really, um, so we have you know some things for your work, for school, um, and also for recreation. And um, I just, we have a lot, if you go to um, the Go Digital platform, you'll see uh, there's a lot more resources there, but I just picked out these because I thought they'd be the most interesting and uh, the ones that, you know, you could probably use the most. So um, that really brings us to the, the end um, 
of uh, my presentation. Um, I'm, fr I'm free to take uh, from questions, but here's my, my information that you can contact me with. Um, you, know, you can call or email or visit us on the web. So um, I guess I wanna, I'll want i go ahead and stop sharing now. Okay, and I'll start my video. So if anybody has any questions on anything that, um, that I went over, I'd be happy to take them now. We do have one question in the chat, and then I'd encourage each person who has a question to unmute themselves. Um, does one need to be a DC resident to have access to all these wonderful resources? No. So if you live in Maryland or Virginia, you can still get a DC library card. Um, and like, like I said, you can get the library card online. So you can use that um, that for, for 90 days without even stepping in a library. So um, it's a quick form that you fill out online and uh, you can get a library card right, right away. So yeah, no, no, you don't have to be a DC resident, but you can live in Maryland, Virginia too. Um, Benjamin, thank you so much. This has been so um, informational. It, it, I mean, I, I'm just like in wow. I had no idea <laughs> great that, um, and I think this is something that we need to share with our students and mm -hmm. with you know. I want to share it with my colleagues um, because we are very unaware of what the resources are at the library. So I just want to thank you for this presentation. Thank Asi for um, bringing you on because. You know, one thing about this pandemic is it's bringing us closer together and knowing what we all do. So I just want to say thank you. Oh, thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for uh, checking this out. Happy to do it. Ben, I wanted to um, ask you, uh, the platform uh, that provides information with the uh, interests and the, uh, and the skills inventories and does the matches, how do you guys keep that data? How do you keep the information up to date? Is it that company, EBSCO? EBSCO, yeah, yeah. They, um, that's... That's the uh, the company that make that uh, makes it and offers it to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, um, are they? They sound similar to. Um, I don't know if one of the AFE team members is on the phone, and I don't know if Tracy's on here. And uh, there's a another organization called EMSI. I think it's e economic modeling. I can't remember what the other acronym stands for. Tracy, if you on there on the line help. Uh, they do something similar, but I was just wondering, um, and, and uh, one of our resources, uh, Career Coach um, DC includes some uh, some elements of, okay. um, of what you have, but, uh, but a little different. And it'd be interesting to explore ways that integrated education and training program providers can use those two systems together um, to complement uh, the suite of analysis that needs to take place for customers to determine the path that they want to pursue. You know, it's you know, I always say in order to know what you want to do, you got to know what you don't want to do. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, uh, none of our life experiences are ever wasted, right? We learn from them, we grow from them. Um, and I do think uh, that it, it does take time for us, uh, for individuals um, to figure it out, you know, uh, both the students that we yeah. serve and sometimes even, you know, for ourselves um, in, in deciding what career path we're going to take. But uh, those are some really, really interesting uh, resources um, that I think would be a benefit uh, to our customers. I think it might also be great at some point to explore um, whether or not uh, the BrainFuse tutorial program could be expanded upon uh, to focus on those any National External Diploma Program um, competencies as well. I bet there probably are some uh, 
creative ways that um, some of the uh, some elements of the product may already be befitting. Stacey, did you see any intersections in that work? Uh, with with which one again? Uh, the, the brain fuse, the, the brain fuse um, help now that, that provides the, the live tutoring. Yeah, the online yeah. tutoring. I think so. I was I was thinking that just the way the DC Public Library Adult Learning Department is using uh, GED Academy for some of it, could we not use career uh, Casas Academy within essential education uh, to identify other individuals? I think that's a great idea. I would like to, um, and maybe we could think about how do we add the tutorial component? You know, that's the piece, um, and I think it's phenomenal, Ben, that you guys. Uh, you know, have the ability to, you know, make those tutoring services available, especially doing um, when, you know, doing uh, non-traditional hours. You know, you got parents who are working with their kids during the day and oftentimes don't really get any me time until late in the evenings. So being able to still focus on their um, professional goals, using uh, the various resources that are available uh, to the library, either early in the morning or late in the afternoon, whenever they get a break from their kids would be extremely helpful. We do have some folks who are interested in the National External Diploma Program who don't always have the, the requisite literacy and numeracy skills uh, to enter into the uh, generalized assessment component of their mm -hmm. program. And so being able to offer some degree of um, tutoring services to those students who are right at the cusp of meeting that requirement would be helpful. And maybe that's something we could look at expanding upon or figuring out how we could partner together uh, to make this a resource for, I think we have, if Tracy's on the phone, I think we have seven national external diploma uh, program providers, mm -hmm. six or seven, but I, I think, I mean, you, I mean, it's so exciting. This is so much, um, so, I mean, all the resources are phenomenal that you, that you guys have. I'm like blown away myself. Yeah, I just want to clarify. So we, so with the, um, the, the help now and job now that that's, um, that's different from the virtual tutoring services that we, that we provide. Um, so, you know, tutoring um, with the, with the GED, that's actually one of us. So one of, one of our staff, well, I tutor a couple of people. Um, my colleague Janice, she, she tutors a couple of people. So we do like Zoom, um, so actually video chat or, or on the phone. The the is they have like these tutors that um, you can't see them, but they, they they do that through chat and through through a whiteboard. So it's a little bit you know it's it's, it's different, but um, you know somewhat somewhat similar services. But we can we can do a lot the student if we work with them ourselves you know because we um we can uh once we take you know we we're just work with them ongoing but the the brain fuse stuff is if you have like an issue with a, a particular have a, have a question about a particular thing they can help help um and we it was it's a similar to a service we used to have called tier.com which which is a, was a, the same thing it has a chat and a whiteboard and some of the programs we're using and they, and they liked it um, and, uh, but it's, it's just very limited because you, you can't see the person. You can only chat. So um, just want to clarify that because there, there's similar, there are very similar services there. Thanks, Ben. I think that both options are wonderful. Yeah. Um, and 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 needed. Um, and so thank you for sharing those resources. Uh, Stacy or AFE team, Nakia, Cynthia. Are there any other? Were there any other questions in the chat for Ben? Yeah, people want to know, can you come out to other groups or do this presentation virtually for others? Um, Ms. Lucas is asking. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm actually um, I'm very willing and happy to, to do this um, right now virtually, but I went, you know, um, uh, before I would, I would, I would come out to, to places and do this. So once we, you know, get uh, um, for doing that, I'm very happy to, to go out and present. Um, I prefer to do that because it's a lot more um, interactive. And, 
you know, you know, in-person interaction. But, um, but I'm uh, very happy to do that right now. Um, so if uh, if if you have if you if you want me to do this like for your staff or for your students, um, and do that virtually, I'm absolutely very happy to do that. You can just email me, and uh, we can set something up. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so Ben, um, I want to take this opportunity to thank you again for coming out, uh, you know, being available virtually to offer this, um, this session at our uh, PD Institute. Um, we are so grateful um, to have the library as a partner, and I'm looking forward to expanding the ways in which we are identifying uh, strategies to meet the needs of district residents. You guys really complement the work that we do um, in, in providing education and training services to DC residents. Um, Ben's information is in the chat. We're also going to be posting this video uh, recording on our website and Ben's in the materials um, on our website as well. Once we complete the professional development Institute, we also have the uh, webinar recordings and the materials from our August PD Institute. We'll definitely have the library back again um, as we uh, continue to offer professional development uh, th throughout the city um, to our partner agencies. And I want to thank all of you who um, participated in today's session. We hope that you're able to join us tomorrow for our mini PD Institute that's going to focus on uh, the provision of wraparound services to youth. Uh, uh, we have a panel presentation with representatives from Potomac Job Corps, um, from the Youth Reengagement Center, Covenant House Washington, OSSE's Health and Wellness Department, um, and they're going to talk about the multitude of services they're making available to district residents and uh, strategies that you can use to meet the increased needs of youth in the District of Columbia during the pandemic. And then the afternoon, we're going to have the Youth Reengagement Center spend some time sharing how they're working with customers to get back on track. They have some really creative programming, uh, such as uh, DC Rec Live, which is sort of like a radio, where Brock, you know, they're using teams like, it's similar to like a, a um, uh, how would you say it? Uh, I, I think of it like a um, almost like a radio broadcast uh, where youth actually share their voices and their opinions. It's live. Um, I always say the Youth Reengagement Center is like live and living color because they are a dynamic group of individuals. Um, they also do these pop ups uh, throughout the city, which are great too, um, in meeting the needs of DC residents. So please, please, please join us uh, tomorrow morning at 10 and then uh, join us tomorrow afternoon at 2. So uh, uh, Dr. Bruce, I'm not sure, would you like to say any closing remarks? Okay. I'm not sure if she's muted, um, but thank you, thank you all 